Okay, we good, defogged, audio's up and running. It's been a morning. Hey, what's up, Cardin friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. I've got a package to open here. And uh, since it's a holiday coming up, which I totally forgot about, I got that means I'm gonna be spending the day before this video comes out doing all the holiday stuff. I wasn't prepared. That's just my way of saying this is kind of a last minute video. I wasn't planning on bringing y'all along for this unboxing, but here we are. Everything that's in here is from an Etsy seller called Yay Brahms. Y-E-Y-B-R-O-M-S, Yay Brahms. I order most of my Heliconia rhizomes from. They always send really nice ones. Them and I think Caribbean farms I've ordered some from as well. Whenever I get on Etsy, because I've ordered from them in the past, it pops up suggestions. And I was on the computer browsing Etsy and it was like, hey, look what they have. And I said, okay. You got me. Not that it takes that much convincing. They have a great selection of heliconias, bromeliads, tropical plants. And I ordered a bunch. So I'm a little surprised by the size of this package. I thought it would be bigger than this. A couple of the plants that are in here are just rhizomes though. So I wasn't really expecting those to be very big. And this did show up last night. Usually I open a package right when it comes in the mail. Instead, I decided I need to film this and it was dark out. So I said, well, okay, they should be all right overnight sitting in the package in the house and the air conditioning. Who knows what the plants will look like? That's the thing. The reason I place this order is that typically they just sell rhizomes, which is just basically a root for the plant for the heliconias that I normally order from them and gingers as well. But they were offering actual live plants, which I hadn't seen before. And I thought, well, why not give that a try? Because the heliconias, when you start them, I'm trying to find some heliconias here. And then from rhizome is typically pretty easy, but it does require some patience, right? So here's some that I started about a month ago. That's what I got there. Now this particular variety is one that is difficult to get going. It's not the best representation, but it just makes a huge difference getting them as plants that are already going and doing their thing. Otherwise with rhizomes, I prefer to get those going and started back in like the early spring, late winter. That way they're looking good, like nice full plants by the time it's nice out. And then the downside to that, of course, is that starting them inside isn't always the easiest thing to do because heliconias really do like warm. They like things nice and toasty, so that can make it take longer to get them going. They're going to be more prone to rot and other issues if they're not getting that heat and the moisture that they want, because they also want a good amount of moisture. My growth space, it's not really a problem. Things are heated and climate controlled and they're really, really well. But for the average household, starting them inside isn't necessarily an option unless you want to set things up with like a heat mat, heat cables, mess with humidity domes and all that mess. So by getting them this way, don't have to mess with any of that. Not that I'd be starting any of them indoors this time of the year, but I'm just referring to breaking out of older habits. Here's my invoice. Not gonna be expecting much out of these as far as size goes. They had pictures up on the website, so I knew what I was getting to an extent, right? Ooh, I'm seeing something in here that looks really nice. Uh, it looks beautiful. This is so different from any package I've ever gotten from them before. I don't really <laughs> even know how to go about opening it. You, know, you never know if people have things taped down to the bottom. Most places do just to keep the plants from moving around inside the packaging. You don't want to pull up too hard. Any of y'all ever made that mistake before when you first learned about the plants being taped down to the bottom and you yanked just a little bit too hard and ended up breaking your brand new plant? That just me? Well, that's not surprising. That's kind of fun, like a tropical plant newspaper. Okay, I'll start with the rhizomes. These are Heliconia sassy. Have you ever seen these before? They're a really pretty pink and yellow for the most part. Heliconia flower, there are generally some hints of red and some green and orange. It's a very colorful flower. The sassy used to be one of my favorite of the Heliconias. And then I had a bad streak of growing them, which could have just been the place I was getting them from. That place isn't around anymore. I mean, the plants always came in seeming healthy, but the flowers I was getting out of them were very washed out and muted. They weren't that beautiful, vibrant color. And that could also have something to do with my pHs and temperatures. There are a lot of factors that could go into why that was happening, but it's been like, I don't know, 12 years since I've grown one of the sassy, so I thought I would give it a shot and see if maybe it was just a bad batch. It could have been multiple years of bad batches, but still, it could have just been a bad batch. This one, very popular, Heliconia. That's the growing plant. Pretty small. This one will get much, much, much bigger. This is Heliconia Tropic. I already have one of these. When I ordered it, I was thinking of the Carmesita. Carmesita is a Heliconia that, in a way, similar to the Tropic with its vigor. I'd say the Carmesita is a little bit more vigorous than the Tropic. Gets larger, even though it's generally listed as a dwarf. 
and has a reddish flower on it, whereas the tropics can be more of the yellow and orange inflorescence. With the tropic, if I don't fertilize these like absolute insanity, I don't get flowers out of them. And the ones that I overwintered this year, or yeah, this year, last winter into this year, they took a bit of a hit this spring when I moved the plants outside because the temperatures was up and down and up and down and up and down and it got to a point where I was like I need to just start them over and I basically cut the entire thing down and now it has fresh growth coming up. I don't want to remove those from their container. I wanted another one to try and do something different with it. Again I'm pretty sure I was thinking of the Carmesita when I ordered this but it's going to be the same difference in the sense that I wanted to get some little Heliconia starts just like these that are little bit earlier to get going. Not much, there's just one growth on there. The heliconias that I can go ahead and pop around the garden and into the ground instead of having to keep them in containers. So I'm basically doubling up. I didn't feel like dividing the plants is all that that's about. It looks good, nice, big, green, healthy leaves. Probably wondering what this is. This is a Heliconia Petra. I have a few of these also, but they're in containers. I wanted some that I could throw into the ground and I didn't want to divide up the ones that I have. The Petra Heliconia is similar to the Andromeda as far as the color goes. I believe they stay just a smidge smaller. They have a thicker, girthier stalk on them. Andromeda, Petra, the most Citericorum types, they should be pretty vigorous once they're to the appropriate size. That's a nice looking plant. Okay, last one, look at that. Looks good, nice green, healthy leaves, a thinner leaf than on the others. Heavier texture in the veining as well. The leaves on this one reminds me more of a hirsuta type than a Citericorum. That's nice, I like that. I like the ripples in the leaves. This is an Adrian. The Adrian is another dwarf type, has an interesting flower on it that looks different from the other Heliconias. The one that I have hasn't flowered for me yet. I, I would imagine this one will probably flower for me before the ones that I have do because mine died back almost completely to the ground in the winter time in the container. It died almost completely back inside the container, which isn't that unusual. Some heliconias will do that. Come back in the springtime, as long as they get the warmth and everything they want in the spring and the water, they come back for you. But this is maybe about the same size as one I have. Regardless, it's a nice looking plant. It's a nice variety of helis there. We didn't expect any flowers out of the tropic for a few months. These generally have to push three to four feet high before you start to see the inflorescence on those. And I, with the tropic, usually have to hit them with Fertil a blooming fertilizer, a diluted blooming fertilizer. You don't want to overdo it. I'll normally have to do that like twice to get the Tropic and there's another that's called like Orange Gyro to get them to bloom for me before it's fall. They'll bloom strongly if you have a longer growing season. But where I live, it typically doesn't get all that warm outside until like oh, May. We'll have plenty of days in the 80s and 90s in March and April by plenty being like three or four sometimes, but they're scattered randomly in between days where it's also 30 degrees and 50 degrees. So that consistent warmth doesn't really get here until May. And uh, this year didn't really get here until like two weeks ago, which is very odd and unusual. Made for a very productive year of getting hard work done in the garden. I didn't mind it not being sweltering hot while I was planting shrubs and moving rocks and containers around. These are nice and damp. The root balls feel pretty sturdy in there. These are still nice and damp, but not sopping wet. They're not dripping water, anything like that. I can feel the root mass from the container down here in the bottom, which is a great sign. Normally I would pop these up now, but they're gonna be going in the ground and uh, it's uh, again, holiday. So I'm probably going to uh, drop these into some little four inch containers just for today and tomorrow, because I don't really have time to be messing with the garden today or tomorrow making sure they stay nice and moist, and then probably get them planted up in this weekend's vlog. All right, last but not least, do you see it? Isn't that beautiful? And no, nothing was taped down in here, but they were packed so tightly, they didn't budge. Saw the one broken leaf on that last heliconia I was holding up, and I don't get hung up on that. Things ship in the mail, you're going to have some broken and distorted leaves. On that note, while I was on Etsy, it suggested this palm tree that I didn't order because it was like 200 and something dollars. Curious about the seller. I hadn't heard about them before, the one that they had suggested. And I was reading some reviews and there was one just really nasty review from someone about the condition their plant arrived and they're like, I wouldn't have spent $200. I think it was like a Chinese fan palm, something like that. It's like $200 for one that's not very big. It's very upset saying I wouldn't have spent $200 on a plant if I knew it was gonna have these brown leaves and look like it was dying. And they posted a picture and it was a frond with like one tiny, itty bitty little brown spot on it. I was glad they posted the picture so people who uh, 
understand and have reasonable expectations for shipping plants can have a better idea that the seller's not like a monster sending dying plants. Oh, this is beautiful. Look in there, isn't that gorgeous? This, that is a bromelia. This is Neoregelia Sunkiss. It's a full sun. Neoregelia has some beautiful spiky thorns coming out of the sides. Great color on this. When the Sunkiss gets more sun, this I don't think has been in full sun. When they're getting more sun, they get a really vibrant pink on the outside of the leaves. Probably why they're called sun kiss. When they get in the sun, they get just little hints of like a really nice vibrant pink on the outside of those leaves. This, I guess I could pot it up. Okay, I'll give it a shot. We'll pot it up. What are these? Dominoes. It'll be nifty tomorrow when everybody's hanging out up here. So, pardon the mess on the table. I'm currently restructuring and doing a bunch of stuff with my drip. I talked about that in my last video. So there's just, drip fittings and various cutters and valves and connectors spread all over the place. Okay, all right, that should be good. The table's protected. Hopefully there's nothing offensive going on here. I didn't, I didn't read the paper. Oh my gosh, I remember this being so much heavier. That's not heavy at all. At least not as far as giant ceramic feet are concerned. This is a foot planter. And, um, not entirely sure what I was going to say after the obvious part of this is a foot planter. I don't know. What else do you want me to say? It's a foot. There's no, I, nobody needs this. It's totally weird. I understand. It was a gift and uh, I have this thing where somebody gives me something, I feel like I can never part ways with it. So here I am like 15 years later after this was given to me and every year I have to plant it up with something and I'm just like, what, why, why do I have this? It has been a fun one to plant up just because I guess since it's a foot, in my mind, I feel like I can put whatever I want to in this container and it doesn't matter. It can just be weird. So there doesn't need to be any rhyme or reason that don't care about things matching. Not that there's anything particularly weird about a bromeliad. Normally I throw a pineapple in here. I love growing pineapples. Last year when I did the pineapple thing, the, it just, the dogs ate it very quickly. I say the dogs, of course, mean turbo. It wasn't immediate. I think it lasted for maybe a month or so. That's not too bad. Probably find something to place over the edge or move this more towards the middle and have other things. I mean, I'm going to go look at my annuals, see what I have to work with. I don't think there's going to be anything that I want to use for this though. Okay. I did find some things. I think I'm going to look pretty because these are plants that are past their prime. It was very, very hot recently. So they cooked a little bit. That's just a better reason to go ahead and get them planted up though, right? I'm going to move this into the center and then just plop these in around. There's not room for these. What was I thinking? These aren't going to fit in there. No, yeah, these do need to be planted up. These are supertunia, what is it, persimmon. Beautiful supertunias. Tearing apart their roots to make them fit in here, that's not going to make them look any better. And I don't think I have anything else. So this is done, isn't it? Just look at that, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's not done. I need to backfill that. For the bromeliad would appreciate having soil around its root ball, right? It's just an all-purpose mix. I've added sand, some bark chips. There is some compost in there because it's a blend that I was using for some potted plants. That'll be fine for this though. It drains very, very, very well. That's the main thing with bromeliads is that whatever you're using, water needs to flush through it. There needs to be some gaps in it, something chunky so that there can be oxygen down around those roots or else they could rot and die. Don't want that to happen. Okay, there it is. Just nice and weird. I actually think that this looks better without anything else planted in it because it makes it just look that much more odd. I like it. That's perfect. I would either say bromeliad or agave. Just I'd like to have something tall and vase-shaped in there. Don't know why. Just do. And that's perfect. Just the right amount of weird and mismatch for that container. If I stumble upon some type of sedum or something nice and green that would cover the top of that soil really well, I'll grab it and throw it in there, or I'll maybe top dress it with some sand or gravel. But for right now, I'd say this is good. The bromeliad itself looks nice. The root ball was nice and firm, didn't fall apart when I pulled it out of the paper. It was still moist. It's a good looking plant and it's big too. I, that's probably the first thing I should have mentioned. This is a nice big plant. That's a good 12 to 14 inches tall. The big chunky bromeliad. I did already say it's a neoregelia. This should splay out some more and get more of a flat appearance as it grows out. That'll take some time. The camera's about to overheat. Okay, thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoy. Check out Yay Brahms if you're into the bromeliads. I like that they are offering some plants that are already going you know, they only have one growth on them. You may not think that that would be a huge advantage over just planting up the rhizome, but it does speed things up quite 
a bit because you're not waiting for the rhizome and foliage to get going. You now have some foliage to help feed the rhizome and those roots to let them put up more growth. You get more growth out of them, you get more flowers out of them. And that's what we want with the plants, more growth and more flowers. Okay, thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just... Camera overheated right when I was saying goodbye. That's not good timing. Guess it's good enough you don't have to listen to the fan for the entire video. All right, like I said, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well, had a good holiday if you are in the US and celebrating. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.